like it's just like focusing on your niche. Don't worry about everybody else. Stay in your lane. Stay in that lane. Stay in your lane. That's what our mentor, um, when he started working with us, that was the one thing he liked and he said about us was that we were authentic and that we had a lane. We created a lane for ourselves and we weren't trying to do it like anybody else. So we were staying in our lane and we just stayed true to that. The Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the skills for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. What's going on today? I'm joined by Ruben and Toya of Grits. Welcome to the Perspective Podcast, my friends. What's new with you since we last chopped it up at Crop Conference? Oh, hi, and thank you so much for having us on. We were so excited to do this podcast today. Uh, we have been hustling, like always. Uh, <laughs> What's new? Yeah, What's new, new? New things of grits. Uh, we actually just did a mini mural yeah. here in the city of Houston. The city of Houston um, arts paid for us to come and do a mural on a little electrical box next yeah. to a spotlight. Oh, yeah. Location, all the intersections usually have like electrical kind of box and it's part of like trying to beautify the city. They're awesome. trying to paint them, and paint them around in the city. So we got selected for one and that was an interesting, that was our first time like um, painting like a mural. So uh, Did you actually do analog, not like a vinyl or a decal no, or anything? No, it, it was, was all, a, it was all by hand, all painted, no, no, like not even like spray cans. So I was like, dude, like we... It took like two times longer than it was expected. But it's okay. We yeah. enjoyed doing it. We had a good time doing it. Last no, I was, I was about to say, like, I actually, because I've I never done, I haven't, well, I haven't done one in a very long time. So I actually went and looked at some of your tips to see what it is. Nice. Exterior online. latex paint. Did you use that? Yeah. yeah. We, did, we did, on the box, I had to do acrylic, but okay. just all the things that I needed, because I was like trying to run through how would I like try to replicate something I did on the computer on the box and then i realized i was like oh man i'm really starting to paint now so that Good. Was, it was interesting man perfect what else you guys always got something you're always making moves i know june was slammed for you guys right oh my god uh, june super slammed um uh big car shows coming off of that getting yeah. invited to new shows new events uh we got to actually at Croc, we mentioned that we had never met Leon Bridges. Right when we got home, Leon hit us up, invited us out to a concert, gave us great tickets. We got to go backstage, chop it up with him. Um, so we got some things working. Yes. Um, so we, we definitely are uh, making moves. Um and reaching out to so many different areas and having so much come back. A few people from Crop has hit us up, wanting us to design some stuff for them. So we got some new shirts in the works, uh, kind of inspired off of that Memphis hip shake. Um, so we're looking forward to that with some people out of New Orleans. Perfect. So, um, that, and like, of course, yeah. designing new things, getting more inspiration. Um, what else you doing? He's doing, Ruben does a lot of stuff that, uh, just on a regular for our pencil break company that is just things you would never expect for him to be doing. It could be something for a church or a school or like the, the soda thing, pay, exotic pop. We, we do um, <laughs> graphic designs for exotic pop, which is all of these rappers like Travis Scott and little Yachty well, and yeah, all of those pop. cats that love soda. Yeah. And we graphically designed the soda packaging for him and so that and he did a soda machine here recently where it was a full who was it for a little pump no that was a that was travis's it was a, so, a yeah. whole soda machine so, so it was like uh they did like a whole astroworld theme with yes but they do like basically like their their pops uh their soda is like like limited edition like well stuff that used to be sold in the u.s but now it's like you can't find them and what they did was like start finding them and bringing them to u.s but they're like they're pretty expensive they're like but it was like a cotton 20 candy. bottles of soda yeah it's like a cotton candy but, flavor yeah. or um just really weird flavors just weird flavors like like it was like sprite remix but like they like you had like a whole plethora of stuff but and it just happened to that new wave of hip-hop yeah, mm -hmm. so that he started branding them with different artists. So I think Little Pump was the first one, and and um, last year for Astroworld concert here, man, he like 
I designed like the boxes to go with, like a lot of the material they were giving out at the at the um, at the tour, and then they decided the like to Bowl do party. You know, the, yeah, the Super yeah. Bowl thing they did, and now and, like they did like a branded vending machine. So I love how you guys. I love how you guys are tapped into this new wave, but then with grits, you're also tapped into like the historic stuff. And that's why I really want to get people to like know more about you, especially getting to tapped into conferences now. Like yeah. you're getting even more connected now. So for those who don't know, can you give us a, a brief Wikipedia page summary about yourselves? And then we're gonna dive into grits. Okay. So you wanna go first? Yeah. Help me. So <laughs> okay. my name is Ruben Levi. I'm originally born, I was born and raised in Houston, Texas. Uh, I've been going to art school, I, I feel like it's all my life. So art designed and I went to architecture and U of H. That was kind of boring, but I like art, like like graphic design stuff. So then I just basically like learned and taught myself a lot of the programs, a lot of things and just kind of like mer found like a, a different way to do some art and still like make a living, you know. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's me. <laughs> that's oh. Wikipedia style. Quick. Yeah. That's you. I am Toya B. Levi. I um, went to school at the University of Kansas. I was in music therapy and psychology. Uh, my passion has been, ever since I was in high school, has always been marketing. So I've always been involved in doing marketing and got into um, the music industry right out of college and started doing marketing and management for different artists, underground artists, as well as well-known artists. Um, from there, I did different conferences like South by Southwest and College Music Journal in New York, and then moved out to Las AC3. Vegas. Yeah, AC3 Hip Hop Festival in Atlanta, um, and and built my name up uh, in the industry for what I did with marketing and with management. And then we met, and I decided to uh, not manage everybody else and manage my Aww. husband's crew. <laughs> She's telling the whole story. So we got, we, we met in uh, Austin in uh, 2011 11, and we just, a mutual friend introduced us. We, we started talking and, you know, like three, four months later, we got married. We've been married almost eight years now in September. So that's been an a incredible journey. I think like journey kind of, uh, I mean, Grits kind of marked like kind of like just that, like that timeline of that journey a little bit. Like, it's mm -hmm. like this really, um, Grits as a brand, I started kind of before, but I kind of like, didn't really, like, I just had like just different ideas, you know, like random shirts with different stuff. And when we got married and got together, I really kind of put a pause on it for like, pause on it and like held off, like took a little sabbatical, chilled out like for like almost two years. And I actually, during that time, I was just kind of like figuring out what I want to do with it. And I, we, I merged both of our lives and both of our interests in, in, into it. And it was what you see today, like the brain and everything just kind of came out of that. Yeah. So what, what is Grits? I know, but not everybody knows. What do you mean? Okay. So Grits is like, a, it's a Southern lifestyle brand, but it's like told through the view of like Black Americana and and traditionally, like black, uh, like Americana is like you kind of always go back to like the heyday of like America. And I was like, this is interesting. All the stuff I was finding, like I collect a lot of vintage things too, and follow people. And I always noticed, like I didn't see enough black people anywhere. And I was like, man, this is interesting. I just wanted to kind of like expound on that idea, and just like coming from our perspective and our and our histories and her family. Like I just try to mer merge it into something that that's a really like our ethos is like no grits, no glory is really about the hard work in life and what we get out of it. So us um, going, that kind of references actually a little back to our lives. Like the same month I found out Toya was pregnant with our youngest child was the same month I got laid off from my job. So we were like, I don't know why you say laid off. You didn't get laid off. Okay. Later. I feel like it was a little bit no. of both. <laughs> <laughs> It was a mutual separation, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but <laughs> kind of mutual. But anyway, it it led us to like kind of finding ourselves. And I think that journey of uh, saying, hey, like whatever we wanted to do, like this is an opportunity to try to go out and actually do it. And from there, that's what like we started, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's like, see. Also, you mentioned at Crop Conference, Grits is what you made of. Yeah. yeah. So like Grits is like, 
um, what's that book name? Uh, I forgot her name. I think it's Angela Duckworth or something. But it talks about grit being like the persistence, determination. It's kind of really the X factor in success. Like you can have the talent and hard work, but it's like the persistent nature of working day in, day out really gets you to the end goals. And sometimes we try to like negate those for like, oh, we're, you know, um, like, what's it like the kind of like new age thinking, like your mind and all that. And I think that's a part of it, but it's like, I think being, it's- like, Being woke? Yeah, you're being woke or being, you know, you're, 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 you want to manifest, but manifest comes with the, really with the work that you- It's like self-awareness in a sense. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's really a reminder. So it's like even when I get down or something like that, it's like constantly being reminded to keep on pushing and keep on moving through. You know? That's right. And, and keep on pushing too. I wrote down this quote that you guys, I, I don't know who said it, who quoted it, but remember your dream is a creative scheme. So keep on pushing. Keep on pushing. That was uh, what I said. And that was uh, That's Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield. Oh, no. Curtis Mayfield. Oh, no. Telling you that, like, yeah. Oh man, I, I love that. I love that. That was like my favorite part of your talk was hearing that. And you know, I try to catch on to those quotes and stuff. But um, I want to dive deep more into your your backstory because you both you're side hustlers. Yeah. <laughs> and that and this whole audience is side hustlers, and I'm a side hustler. I'm on my lunch break right now doing this shit. So <laughs> you, know, you know, so what do you guys do for your day jobs? I mean, before and, my before my day job, it was the same thing. I go to work and I come home and I would literally work on side stuff to like that was my most passionate thing was like, like the work stuff is like, okay, that's whatever. It's Pays not, bills. yeah, you got to answer to like, you know, make my logo bigger. Like, oh, I love it. But I want to add like this whole page of text and make stuff. Make it pop. I know what I, <laughs> I know what I don't like when I see it. <laughs> I just heard that last week. Yeah. I, this is art, like these arbitrary sayings, like people throw up and be like, oh, this is a nice color. I want the opacity like 20%. You're like, well, Pat, what? <laughs> You're like, what are you talking about? But those things, like the side hustle, is like really where the chance you get to do what you want to do. You have like you have control of control over your, uh, what where, where what projects you want to pick. And for me, it was um, I wasn't always like a, I wanted to be a designer. I had to figure out how to get there, and I just ba I basically like created projects for myself. You know, I just like I would make album covers. I would make um, just illustration things, and from there that. Um, that led to meeting people online. I think when I first started, like MySpace, and just meeting a couple people. MySpace, yep. yeah, yeah. Here, man, just like, but you're like, oh, you're a graphic designer. I'm like, damn, I'm like working in, in a tele, uh, uh, was a telemarketing job. I'm trying to get the hell out of here, you know. So it was like that kind of situation, and I've but been pushing as sense. for the here and the now and today, what do we do for our jobs? Yeah, our jobs are pencil break. And grits. And, and, and pencil break was what the design part of it, right? For all of the clients and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Design marketing firm. Um, so it pretty much covers, you know, everyday things and expenses. Grits does the same thing since we do a lot of our sales primarily online and we have that following. Mm -hmm. uh, do our pop-ups once or twice a year that gets that nostalgia going uh, for the brand and makes more followers and they're always you know pretty much our following knows our system now they know that we're going to come out with something every two months and to look for it and to get on the pre-sale and to, you know so that is uh, a, a lucrative income we um went to Las Vegas last year to go to the wholesale market. Um, so we have one or two wholesale accounts, um, one in Canada at a, a store called the Rock and Cowboy. So that's a big account for us as well as just anything that we do here um, out of the house. So we've been doing it for uh, enough years to where um, I handle all of the management and the marketing and the uh accounting side. Uh, before me and Ruben got together, I worked for a forensic accounting firm in Las Vegas. So that was something that was really in my niche of things that I could bring to the table when our um, relationship got together. So I make sure I know what the flow is going to be like, what the seasons are going to look like, what what we're getting used to, what every year is like, so we can plan ahead of time. Um, we don't have a big, fabulous, expensive life. We have a very nice, quaint home that's ours. Um, it's two bedrooms with my my daughters are 
right here with us. We work from our home. So where you see what you see right now is not only our workspace, but also our living room. So we um, definitely have created a lifestyle for us to be able to achieve our dreams and keep our focus on our goal. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have, you know, we're going to build a second home here on our property. So that's things that we're working towards all the time and that we're constantly gathering. Um, and we, you know, do things to still have fun. We still go on summer vacation. We still, you know, travel to see our family. We still, you know, take our kids to do things. They have access to everything that they would ever want and need as for music camps or tennis camps and all my art supplies. All, yeah. <laughs> art supplies. And yeah, and and we just call it living the gritty American dream. You know, it's our dream of what we wanted to do, and ultimately we're content. You know, and we don't have to get up in the morning to go content. to a job. You know, we, <laughs> we go to content job. and hungry at the same yeah, time, though. We gotta work. We gotta I, work right here. So well, I always tell people, like, when it comes to doing um, design or just like want to be freelance, like freelance and stuff, it's like it may not be like like making rich. But the, be- the 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 strongest thing that I think anybody can like um, I say is like your freedom, the time to like have freedom over your life is like yep. probably the most valuable thing. Like the freedom to like take whatever time off. Like oh, I feel like going to have some ramen right now. We're gonna go and do it. You know, it's like we go in, we'll go and do it versus like feeling like you're stuck or like you know, like oh, I can't go to break it to this time or somebody else is telling you. So that, that, but that's a beautiful I think thing. I think um the the funny part is when the magic actually comes together and we're working and we just have an awesome day or an amazing mm-hmm. week and we just knock it out the park. Like I'm just pulling in clients left and right, you know, just pulling in bids left and right for him and our creative juices are flowing and I'm sending out contracts. You know, when we have those weeks, it's just like, wow, this crap is coming together. Like, oh my God, now we got to get another person to help. And okay, now, you know, and that's just on the graphic design side. When grits is blowing, going good, <laughs> that's a whole nother roller coaster ride because, you know, he does all the design, but when it comes to packaging and shipping and all of that, a lot of that is me. So it, it can be overwhelming when you have 85 orders coming in a day that you're trying to ship out and get to everybody on time, you know, good timing and, you know, no complaints, but, um, it's just been, uh, it's, it's a hustle. Like you said, it's a hustle. It is. It is. Yeah. And you guys vibe well. So I take it. You're like the business cat and he's the creative play cat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm having a hard time trying to take them both off at the same time and wrapping my wife more into the, the, the thing. With him, I, I saw it best to let him be the creative. And I know that, that what he does, I can't do, you know, I, I know that role and I'm great with it and I have no problem, but there's times where I'll look at something he's creating and I might say, okay, change this or maybe do this yeah, or let's yeah. spin it like this. Or what do you think about this? I'll ask sometime, you yeah. know, like sometimes like, Definitely for good things, but like, well, for a lot of stuff, sometimes like, ah, like I, I like it, and then I was just like, hey, like, what you think? And she might just see something that I would never think of. It's good outside perspective. Yeah, my wife yeah. has the same. She says she's not creative, but man, sometimes she can have an idea or a nice little. She's a lot more creative than she can. Yeah, yeah. She, she sees things like, like sometimes I ask for things for like different perspective, like what a woman like perceive this right or. You know, mm-hmm. things like that. Like, you need that. Because sometimes being, like, working at home, you can get so much in your head that you don't really, like, you just got... Too close to it. Yeah, you got to, like, step away or, like, take, like, hey, like, see someone else's perspective and that can help, too. It's, like... So, y'all, you just got to... You and her, you're just working on your balance right now. Just like mm-hmm. me. You know, once you and her get the dance down, it will work out. Oh, but get the yeah. dance down. I like it worded like that. Yeah. <laughs> and slowly she's helping out more and more. So, yeah, I'm trying to get on your guys' level. Damn. <laughs> man, we all trying to get there, man. It, it, it's a it's it's a challenge. I know, it's like, because you have to switch into, um, you got to know when you're dealing with the, like the business minded person at the moment, or you're dealing with your wife. <laughs> and you got to, and you have to be like, okay, I have to like take that as it is. Sometimes it doesn't go over well, but then sometimes you know, I, I would try to let things marinate and be like, you know what, I saw where you were coming from. I just didn't want to hear it at the time, and just, you know, we and rock on. You know? All right, this question is coming out of left field. So you got a pretty hardcore grits audience that I'm I'm finding out about, especially like the more places you keep going, conferences or car shows or uh, pop-up shops, whatever. What have been 
your biggest keys for audience growth? And what's been your biggest key for driving your, your limited apparel purchases? You know, people, people seem to be pretty, pretty hyped when you have something new out. You know, what, what's, your, what's your key secrets for audience building and for building up that hype around new releases? I think for audience building is like, um, I think it's two parts. One is like finding, finding a niche, whatever, whatever you like, and find, like focusing extremely on that niche. And then I think from there, you can build your audience to in, and then allow things to grow outside of that. Like, I think our brand is really consists of like, of like three or four interests kind of like graphic design, a little bit of um, like people like graphic design or illustration design, but then people who like vintage stuff, but then people who like little history. There's also people who like hot rods and like motorcycle and like, or people who like the South. And it's kind of like these co-centric circles of groups are like kind of like overlapping and just kind of finding your way through there. And um, the other part is um, Seth Godin says, I think he said, uh, love those who love you and ignore everyone else. Mm. Is it from This Is Marketing or? It might be. I, I, it's either him or Hugh McLeod, one of them. It's a quote that we have on our refrigerator. Yeah, I, I want to say it's, I want to say it's Seth Godin. And we really follow that too. Uh, yeah, I think that's a that's a big thing. So it's like don't like it's just like focusing on your niche. Don't worry about everybody else. Stay it's, in your lane. Stay in that lane. Stay in your that's lane. Our, that's what our mentor um, when he started working with us. That was the one thing he liked and he said about us was that we were authentic and that we had a lane. We created a lane for ourselves and we weren't trying to do it like anybody else. So we were staying in our lane and we just stayed true to that. Mm-hmm. And it was just mm-hmm. kind of like when you're doing it and it's authentic and people see that about you, they gravitate towards you. Yeah. You know, it doesn't it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a you know, you don't have to go and hashtag the mess out of your posts on Instagram or, you know, that's one of the things I teach people too. create your own unique hashtag that is going to be yours for tracking purposes and stick to having that and stick to making sure, you know, even if you do find that, uh, you know, you're, you know, what we did with the green book, um, we hashtagged onto the green book movie just because that was something that was going on in the area. That was the same thing of what we were creating. So just uh, following what's going on through your social media platforms is always a good way to help increase audience. Um, but also, also trying to also creating content that really that's right. that, that that serves that audience. You know. Mm. We're a little bit, I, sometimes I feel like I'm a hodgepodge, with, like Grizz is like a hodgepodge was going in my mind, but um, like say for Memorial Day, like I had a lot of like, I probably have a lot more, but just different stories of different um, blacks and like different um, military things. And I was like, okay, just pulling out a couple like to talk about and people appreciate that. I mean, that gives you, uh, I think that, that, that it doesn't cost anybody anything, but sharing that information get hopefully like makes gets a little more valuable to someone like hey creates, like I, I learned something a, out of that like a topic that's, that's a talking point you know people like to read and hear and learn history and so I think when you're learning it, and creating like with a group like yeah. you you like teaching like able like to share things with each other allow for right. people like to it helps like people to create conversation you know there's three types of value educational entertaining and inspiring and i feel like your account kind of lands on all those little buckets of things you know yeah thank you yeah, thank you. yeah. yeah. well it's something seth Godin like this is marketing like i've been living by that book has radically changed my life but it's kind of like what you're saying you know love the ones who love you and he talks about basically going for depth instead of width but at the yeah. same time you guys are going for depth you know who your target audience is and i'm not necessarily that target audience but eventually the more you keep going for depth it starts rippling out for width as well and then you rope in people yeah. like me who really vibe to the brand and the message and the designs the designs is what got me in there but then the story and the value that you provide is what really hooks me yeah so it's exactly. educating me at the same time what was the one that you just posted um french um jazz military oh, um, yeah the harlem hellfighters and yeah um, basically like they help bring jazz into paris like you know, like they didn't, they wasn't um, allowed to like actually fight with any of the white uh, battalions or anything. So they literally had to, like, they were left with the French and that whole relationship like birthed onto like jazz spreading out there. So it was just. See, like, like I had no idea, but you're staying with your own, your own, you're staying within your own lane, going for depth, but yet you're still like roping in 
other people outside of it like me so it's a perfect people like them and some people don't like them and you just like you just roll with it man you know and the, as long as people stay around like that's pretty cool so yeah, you can't like create people. for the masses so no, you can't like I try to do that try to be too safe and you turn into vanilla yeah it's like there's actually there's no real brand like most brands who are like most brands start off not going toward like trying to serve everybody they're usually focused on like one yeah. market like niche market like patagonia is like not making like sports shoes you know what i'm saying like they're like they're focused on their on their goods like outdoor wear and like just a certain environment they have a specific lane so i kind of like look at it like we just kind of like we got a lane and if everybody wants to join in that's cool yeah. and if not that's cool too i love it so just to recap two ways to really establish and build that diehard audience is one finding your niche, which for you is combining like three to four interests and in having a melting pot and then, you know, putting it out into the world. And the second one is by staying in your own lane so you can stay true to yourself and attract yeah. those same like-minded people. Oh, and I'll, I'll add one more. Let's well, do three. Just three. Well, I think both of those tie in, but if you could take those two and then wrap it within a story that people can understand, I think adding context and story around it. Yeah. It's the, it's the art of storytelling. So, Kendrick like, Lamar, yes. <laughs> you see all these people doing all these things, and it's like, it's it's how they tell a story through pictures or through con like word content. That's what ties people on, you know. Perfect. I take a lot of notes, so I'm not looking down on my phone or any of that shit. You're good. <laughs> oh, I want to. I want to transition over to like the merch side of things. One, what got you into apparel? Then, like, what? I, I well, guess where did the idea just from that, uh, just from you having those ideas before you two met? And then how have you been so successful with your, cause it's like quality premium stuff. And then you do limited. Um, <laughs> you have a lot of questions today. <laughs> I always have questions. <laughs> no, tell, I was, tell I, us what I, you want. The, the grit says I like really did was like, I want to do clothing. I grew up in like, just like hip hop streetwear, all those things. And um, I was really in the streetwear for years, um, and I just wanted to make a. I was like, oh, I want to make a clothing line, but I was like, I wanted something that just really reflected my background. Like saying, like I was like from the south. I was like, man, dude, it's nothing that looks good. And if it is southern, it's like either like it's corny or it's like it's corny or good or one or the other. Like they're usually like it's usually like really not like the design is horrible. And I was like, man, if I could fulfill that need of making something like that feels like proud, like hair from the south, but it doesn't look like some corny like i don't know like some, some suburban jack stuff but yeah we seen like some ugly things so i was like i just want to make some <laughs> yeah that was really that's really what it was and and like some of his first shirts when i first got with him um his designs really stuck out to me they were more comic book style and he had this shirt and i love the shirt i don't even have it anymore but it said it was called junk food junkie and it was this illustration that he did and it was just dope and then he had um he had a few shirts that when i first met him i was like man this is really like this is something like this ain't just, like the 421 yeah I, I you were thinking i should be your manager yeah. <laughs> i was like i can manage this person and actually, he can do some things and uh so then when we started getting more into the black and white palettes uh, cause I, I tell him his favorite color is black and white. A lot of our shirts are Same. black and with white. Well, and a lot of the guys like black shirts. Like I'm the one that knows the orders. I know the numbers. And so I know I've wasted a lot of money buying white shirts. Cause people will say, y'all have no white. I want a white shirt. I'll order these white shirts and they will sit and nobody will buy them. And then I'll end up clearancing them for like 50% off and then they'll go. But the black shirts I sell out of quicker than quick. We can change. We've tried different colors. We've tried navy blue. I stick it with does the simple, okay. Black, yeah, black, black and black. Black. No, it's like black, <laughs> white, gray, then maybe navy blue. But we kind of keep it simple, just because it's easier. But I, I honestly like black is part of the. the my black. whole my whole closet is probably eighty percent black. And if you look at crop, eighty percent of people were wearing yeah, black at crop too. It's, Everybody. It's yeah. crazy, but it's like yeah. it's also the shirt that has the like most vibrancy that pops off for an image. Like so when people. Yeah. 
the screen. That's why they sell more, you know. And also, like you know, some people are also big material. And then we have the we have the people that like the front prints. We got the guys that like the back prints. You know, so going back and forth between that, and then you got the women that want the girl cuts. You know, so it's been fun uh, dealing with apparel. Uh, Ruben is very picky, and he has very high standards when it comes to the fabric and the quality of the shirts. So um, we went through a few shirt brands before we got the one that we fit with the best. Mm -hmm. I am a penny pincher. So I went directly to the printer and started ordering the shirts and like the Man, the, the manufacturer. Yeah. The so wholesale. The printer, yeah. yeah wholesale, so the printer, yeah. the printer knew I was getting those prices because I would just tell them, no, I'm going to have those shirts shipped to my house and I'll bring them out to you. And then That's you, the way to do it. you just charge me the ink, you yep. know? And he was like, well, you know, when, when I only charge you a few dollars extra so that I can pay my staff and they can sort the shirts and fold the shirts. And I said, no, I will do all of it, you know, like even down to the labels in the back at first. Um, but, and that was just to cut the cost as much as we could, just to make sure that quality was there and that he could sell, uh, we could sell our shirts at the price point that he wanted. We didn't want to be at that lower end price point. We had to look at other brands and see what they were doing for us to be in that $30 price point range of who's going to pay $30 for a t-shirt, you know, especially when you're going to car shows and most of those shirts are gilded in and they're just cheap. Yeah. Shirts. That cheap so shit. People, oh, people shit. are quick to buy a $10 shirt. Well, the car clubs, um, we were blessed with the car clubs very early on. Uh, one of the main guys of the, the Continental Car Club, which is a big car club in, um, not big, but very uh, elite car club in Austin. I don't know, he, but they're, they're, they, they throw they, the, they throw uh, the car shows. And, and he's a graphic designer. So he has yeah. an eye of design. And when he started looking at grits and our stuff, he was like, as a designer, he fell in love with it. I candy. Not we you know, but that, that's funny though because like yeah, like he was he's the graphic designer, and then we like met the uh, cats over at uh, um, the Austin Speed Shop, and how much that people were there were, like in design because we uh, met uh, I forgot his name, damn I can't think of it. I want to say it's Ken Barber. No, yeah, not Ken Barber. we met Ken Barber. It was like at, uh, 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 Creative Works. Yeah, no, but no, no, it was with the not Ken Barber. He's a uh, he's he's hand lettering and yeah, script. Like, yeah. I forgot the other dude's name. I, I, I if it pops in my mind, but he was we 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 met. We were talking about house, and he was like, he was talking about they, they rebooted like the the house thirty three brand. And I was like, yo, like I don't think I ever realized like y'all were the first like actual graphic design book I ever bought. And I was Andy like, Garcia. Uh, it's not Andy. Um, There's right? one more in the house industry crew, right? There's one more dude. It's that dude that y'all can't think I of. I can't think of his <laughs> I got the I got the book back there, but man, it's out of my reach. He got his card because I told him to get his card that night. I know his names. Anyways, next. Oh, it's Jonathan Dupree. Okay, okay. But I, I, I've seen him before, but we're just we're just talking about just talking about design and we're like we're having all this conversation about design around around hot rods. And I was like, dang, that's wild that like having this conversation. Like mm-hmm. took me back, but that's really like that was between him and like it, between seeing House and maybe like uh, well House Milton Glasser and um, um, what's the other dude's name uh, David Carson like seeing those like people like going so many different weird ways and I was like yo I can actually probably do this you know that was that was life changing so <laughs> yeah and, and I think it's important too for that premium brand like people don't understand what sense of urgency and limited can do. Yeah. yeah. You know? And the t-shirt I wanted from you guys, you sold out like the week before. So at least you got like, you had a, it was the, the uh, logo in the back, um, Roscoe and like, it, with like some moonshine, I believe as well. Big full back logo. Oh, moonshine and mayhem. Yeah. Yeah. Moonshine and mayhem. Yeah. Yeah. My wife rocks that one, but the no. keep pushing one fits nice. We we we, reg- we regularly make those like from time to time. Like I was I was like originally was trying to keep everything limited, but it's like it's kind of weird when people keep asking and you be like, you "Gotta do a reprint." I do it this time, and then you're like, "Okay," he comes right back around, and that was like one of like some. But church- it's like we can't make anything new if we are constantly reprinting. So mm-hmm. we have to we have to limit it because like there's certain times a year that I'm like, "Okay, we need to do this. We need to do that." So right now we're about to release two new shirts. Hopefully, yeah, um, yeah we 
July, <laughs> August, sometime around there. Well, I'm trying. I'm, well, I'm, I'm getting it together. I mean, I really kind of like last week kind of threw me off a little bit off the of schedule of painting some stuff. But I had like some things I wanted to get that kind of done. But I mean, that's the life of what we do. Like, you know, sometimes we start, we try to get things done, and like you, sometimes like you're trying to put out fires that take up the whole day. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, just a part of it's part of the business. On top of having a family. Oh, that's, that's, that's the part I'm trying to adjust to the most now. I'm like, oh shit. He want his attention. Yeah. So like after like once it's like once four o'clock, o'clock four hits. o'clock around, it's like even if I'm trying like to hit like I gotta get this out of my face. I gotta try to finish it out. Then they come home. It's like I can't. I. I, I it's he's hard. also he's also the um the teacher here. So he teaches Brooklyn when she comes home. Time for her homework. Oh, yeah. She does better with him than she does with me. So he does her homework with her and uh, all of that. And yeah, I do like, yeah. <laughs> Help her let, she learn how to read and just, you know, just, it's fun. It's fun, like, seeing a little a kid, like, pick up stuff and you see them, like, learning. You know? I can't. I, I, I'm seeing it already. My son just turned nine months yesterday and he's already slowly. <laughs> uh, by the time this comes out, he might be 10 months closer. Oh, but it's pretty, it's pretty awesome, man. Being a dad is, being a dad is dope. Um, this will be your first Father's Day or your second? This will be my first. Yeah, I've, I have cats, so I mean, technically, I was Father's Day for that, but no, first Father's Day coming up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty special. Um, before we dive into rapid fire questions, this is one of my favorite questions to always ask. What's one piece of advice you give to your past selves when you were just starting off? I want to hear from both of you. Um. On the spot. I know my. Go ahead. Don't be afraid to take risk. Where were you afraid to take risk when you first started off? Um, just as a, I think as a designer, like getting out and meeting people, um, meeting like different things. Like that was always kind of like being, like being social. Like part of me is like a little, it's kind of introverted too. So like getting out and t- I'm talking and meeting with people, like that just increases your chances of, uh, you know, finding new opportunities. And I think starting off, that was kind of difficult, but like you kind of have to go and go through different places till you find, start to find your lane. And I had to, it took me a minute, you know? So that, I think that's something that I would tell my younger self, like do it now, do it often and just, and get it out the way. And you're going to like, the earlier you get to it, like in life, if you're 20 some years old, like now is the time to like put it all on the line, and instead of trying to wait to like much later on when you feel more secure, because by then you'll be too afraid to do anything. Mm. And I, think, I think with me, my biggest one, just like at the conference, my biggest one is self care. So to never overwork yourself, always make sure you take your you time and make sure you have a chance to relax, get adequate sleep. That that mental health is a major deal with me, so I always want to make sure that I would tell my younger self to always make sure you stay on top of that and, you know, okay. yeah. yeah. How do you make time now? Because that's hard for me. It's really hard to disconnect because this shit is play, and it's also my passion. I get up earlier than everybody else. And Early bird. That, yeah, that Same. is my time. Uh, my body will naturally wake me up at 6 o'clock, and if I don't do it, it I miss it. But I get up. I drink a cup of coffee. I go out on the front porch. I meditate. I pray. I thank God for everything in my vision. I can see everything that's around me. And um, that's my, my, my oneness time with myself. Um, and if I can get back to that same space at least one other time during the day, I do. So my, my front porch is my sanctuary. I have my wind chimes out there. We just recently adopted a cat that comes out of nowhere named Garfield. So he comes around and I, yeah, my trees, my birds, my squirrels, that's my place to just (laughs) kind of chill out. Yeah. (laughs) My squirrels. (laughs) So it's like your grounding thing each morning. Yeah. Grounding gratitude. Cool. I dig it. I dig it. That's good. I'm not that good. I need to get some damn squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rapid fire. It doesn't have to be that rapid. We can go on tangents. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you were on death row, what would your last slice of pizza be? Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Slider. Pepperoni, Brooklyn kind of style pie. Boom. That's it. And you're in Houston, right? Yeah. Any more specific? Uh, there's a plate like our favorite place is Luigi's. Um, Luigi's or whatever. 
I like Luigi. Luigi's like our num- number one place. It's nice. All right. Yeah. I'll take you up on that whenever I come to visit. Got lots of family in Texas too. So uh, we didn't get yeah. to dive into this, so it doesn't have to be rapid fire, but what is the Green Book Project? Oh, the Green Book more Project. About is a project that me and my husband started after we took a trip to California in 2016 and racial tension was heightened during that year. Uh, A lot of killings were going on between the police and African Americans. Things were being shown on Facebook Live um, and it just felt really strange traveling with our daughters and we were camping and stuff. So we, um, our fans reached out to us and started allowing us to come stay at their homes just to give us a safe haven just to chill out for a few days and let everything kind of chill out before we hit headed back um and one of the guys house um uh, we're still good friends with he works in hollywood for the film industry and he mentioned to us the green book he said this is like the green book and we were like what is the green book and he said it's a book that an african-american made out of harlem that um helped african-americans have a safe place to stay when they were traveling rather it was a safe hotel a place to eat you know beauty salon you know all of that and so after we heard about it, me and my husband drove back home and we were like, we should research this. So we started researching it and we wrote a, a grant mm-hmm. and we um, applied for it and we won the grant from the Andy Warhol Foundation and the Idea Fund here in Houston. And once we got that grant, what we were going to do was go back to some of these locations listed in this book. Because the book was started in 1937 to about 1965, 66 during the Jim Crow era. So we started getting copies of the book and saying, okay, we're in Texas. We're going to go to Galveston next weekend. What places in Galveston were listed, if any? And then we would go to those locations and see if the address was still there. And we found some hidden gems, some old hotels. And we talked to people in the city and we found out history. And we, you know, just walked in the footsteps of those that came before us when it was hard for them to travel, but they still would travel and take their family to see things. And during that process, we taught our girls what was going on. And we started an Instagram account at the Green Book Project, um, where we would post pictures almost like grits, but it would be pictures and stories. Yeah, it was, a little more, it was more focused toward like the era of the Green Book and and kind of they really describe it like some of the trials and tribulations, some of the things that like people, like some of the successes, uh, like her name. I'm gonna say Bessie, Bessie Stringfield. She's a lady, in like in, a black lady in Florida. She used to ride Harleys, and she like ridden across like the U.S. like in the 30s and 40s, like in the 40s. And like I'm thinking, like a black woman like driving through the South on a motorcycle across the like country a couple of times, cross country is like unheard of. But hearing some of these stories, and then hearing just like about like just a uh, different era and. Uh, of just neighborhoods and just kind of seeing how we got here where we're at and just kind of like a greater conversation on um do you uh, kind of like on the u.s it's a period in history and then just it just happened to line up with this movie that happened yeah and it just so happened was, and the guy in hollywood didn't even know anything about the movie so when he started hearing about it being filmed he contacted us so we were doing all this and the next thing we know um, we had gotten a residency in Memphis to go live there and do the research in Memphis for two months. So we let moved to Memphis last summer, and that's when we were doing all that information there. We came up with the idea of the shoebox dinner, which is a dinner party that we have where everything is fed to you in a shoebox. Um, because a lot of the travelers that didn't have a place to stop and rest and eat at would carry their food in shoeboxes. And so it's a humbling experience where you sit down and you eat out of the shoebox and it was fried chicken and greens and black eyed mm-hmm. peas and mac and cheese and yams. And we show you pictures and talk about the green book. And so from there, we've been scheduled to do different talks at a lot yeah. of historical events. Another side hustle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Love it. Love it. Came around and yeah. the, the Oscars came around June, and the movie June won and yeah, yeah. yeah, Juneteenth is coming up. So we've been um, speaking at a lot of these other engagements uh, for the Green Book Project. So yeah, another That's a whole another. another I'll, be sure to, I'll be sure to link that up in the show notes as well, so people can get access to it for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't realize the the extent to it. I know you talked about it a little bit at Crop, but that's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, it's a just going through history i mean i like history and just kind of going through it but it's like i think it's the only way we can know like where like we know where we're from we know where we're going you that's know? right you're still staying in your own lane it's just an extension of grits 
yeah, to make people that's... love grits even more. So that that's pretty cool. It goes right back to your audience building tips and being true and authentic. So that's pretty powerful. Um, if you could have lunch with one person dead or alive, who would it be and why? One person dead or alive. Damn, that's a good one. What would you do? Ooh, I, um, okay. I would have lunch with Jay Z if I could. Uh, I like some of the way he moves as a businesswoman. Not only that, but as a hustler, and I think that you know my hustle mentality comes. I have a little bit of a New York street sense as well as my own southern flow as well as the quick talk and jive from Vegas so I think when you have that kind of hustler mentality and you're always able to see through things and how to flip it and make your own money I, I love the way he does certain things so I'd like to talk to him and his wife I think that would be a good team just to even take 15 minutes of time with and um, that would help build what we got going on here dig it oh, that's nice. yeah Man, I don't no pressure. No pressure now. Top that. Oh, that's a lot of pressure because I'm like, whoa, what's, you know, I mean, so many people who I want to talk to. That'd be the real question. Seth Godin. He's alive. He's not dead. It could be dead oh, or alive. alive. Dead or alive. He's in a po- he's a popular answer. Man, I feel like, hmm, would it be Seth Godin? Probably. That's a no, good one. it wouldn't. You don't think so? I don't uh-uh. know. I don't know who, the, who I would talk to now. Like, I would really want to feel like I'm, like, really talk to. Dead or alive. I don't have a... I mean, I don't have one. Yeah, you do. Do I? It's deep in there. You just it's think, deep in there. You just can't think about it. Actually, like, I wouldn't Would think about anybody grandpa? alive. Your grandfather? Grandpa Levy? Oh, man. There's some good ones that are family member stuff, too, people that. said. That would be a good one, Grandpa Levy. You know what? Like, I would like to talk to any of my grandparents that's passed away now. I think, you know, like, my, like, closest, I think, like, just liking either old, like, old design or history and all that stuff is just, like, coming, like, growing up in a house and seeing their things and seeing those things and, like, being attracted to it. Just, like, um, my, my grandfather died, like, three years ago, and just going through all his stuff. And it was just like little things that was like, just a, it was old, he worked, used to work in the Nabisco for like 25 years when it was here in Houston. And just like going through a manual of Nabisco and like looking at the illustrations in it makes me like, that was things like that I love. And, you know, he, he would describe things and talk about stuff and like those, you know, those kind of stories, you know? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying not, I'm trying not to go. Oh, that's good. His grandpa was very special to us. Then very, also very your grandpa special. too. Grandpa oh yeah, Charles my grandpa Charles special. is very special too. They they passed away like months from each other. So her grandpa passed, and then my we grandpa came back passed, and like, then right his after passed. Right yeah. After yeah, but Grandpa Levy it was a big blessing to us. He left us a lot, so we still uh, show thanks to him. <laughs> yeah, I got that's yeah. awesome. That's good answers. Yeah. That's good answers. All right. Uh, where do you see grits in the next five years? You know what? Like, uh, goodness, where? where? I see grits big. It's going to be, it's getting I'm not saying it's big. It's My getting- gut says it's going to be big, man. I feel like you guys aren't even scratching the surface yet. Yeah, I know. That's how I feel. I feel like we're just getting started on it. Mm-hmm. And so, um, Everybody we sat down with, we sat down with Bobby Hundreds, we sat down with Stack, we sat down with so many people, Josh, even with, you know, Creative Works, and everybody's like, where, where is it going? It's like, we're just getting started. I mean, we literally are just getting started with this. Yeah. This is going to be, you know, what we're forming and how we're doing it is it's going to be a, a lifelong company for us and our family to take on our girls if they want to take it on, if not it's still going to go, you know, our family is very involved in this company and we're just getting going. We're just getting going. So in five years, I'm like, wow, look at what we've done in this five years already. Like when I look at the list of stuff that we've accomplished, I'm like, okay, the next five years is going to be crazy. Between between all the other crazy (laughs) shit that happened on at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's surprising when we got like, got to where we are. Like ultimately I think grits would like start off like a, like, as a kind of apparel clothing thing. But the reality is it's like a lot more of a lifestyle project. And I think that that part of is like really just really reflection of who we are. Yeah. So whether 
we decided to make some lighters or some different things. Like I'm always thinking like the shirts are great, but also thinking about things like that become you'll like see me, You'll see you know. me at my happiest when we start making jeans. When we start having jeans, Oof. that's when Toya will be. That's when you'll say, okay, Toya's, Toya's, well, she's complete. Well, because that's, that to me, that I don't want to sell a whole bunch of jeans. Like I don't want to yeah. have Levi's jeans. You know what I'm saying? But I want to have Levi's, Levi's. Levi's, Levi's, at least two pair, you know, <laughs> something that we can sell as a, a, a limited edition, you know, a limited edition. <laughs> and the other thing we talked about was home goods, like um, Actually, patterns, it, like pillows and uh, things like that. We also mentioned that in the future. But um, yeah. It just kind of, yeah, I'm trying to figure all that out, like how to get there. But like the jeans would be great. It just depends on. All these, all these other uh, takes issues. a lot of money. Well, all these other money. issues that are these other like you know uh, society things are kind of also messing with out of the economy. It's kind of like yeah, the terms. We're not going to go into that. Well, no. you're definitely in your own lane right now, but I see that turn into a four lane highway someday for sure. It's <laughs> blow up, man. And we're we working there. No, like, we're, we'll just, remember you said it. We just build it. We've been building like I think like slowly but surely. I think now it's like we've been like just really planning out the next five years and it's kind of like it was like like a side it felt like a, it still feel like a side hustle just like grown more than what we expected it to you know side hustle to side business yeah it, 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 it's a transition point where you're trying yeah. to figure out how to transition and it's never a side business it's, a small business a small business it goes from hobby to side hustle and then business side business you know yeah, yeah, every every everything is a leap right so you go from a job to like becoming a freelancer that's a hell of a leap scary and leap then you're like growing it and like okay to become a business now it's another leap that you have so I, I think i read a quote like you know new um uh new levels require new um new skills who said uh, that i don't know I, I might be paraphrasing it I, that's I, all right but it was something it was something of that sort like i keep like I've, I've been kind of talking about, because always heard me say it like a couple of times this past month, I read it somewhere or read something similar, but it was like every new thing is requiring like some new skills and that's where you have to like, have to learn how to grow. For sure. Yeah. So that's, that's been the, that's it right there. Jeez. That's all the stuff. I love it. Uh, last one. Where can people go to follow you online and support you? At Where Grits, W-E-A-R-G. Not We Are Grits. Where Grits. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think I do have We Are Grits. Like, we own that, I too. I think I have All that, right. too. So, but I just, like, it's Wear Grits, um, but We Are Grits, too. We wear Grits at um, dot .com, at um, Twitter, at Wear Grits. Facebook is Wear Grits. Um, Instagram is Wear Grits. We're mostly, I'm mostly concentrated on Instagram, but on Facebook and Twitter, Twitter is kind of like, I'm kind of getting back into that a little bit. So, just a different version of like different parts of grids and green book project oh same yeah. with the green book project at the green book project on instagram um and facebook and the green for the website ruben toya thank you so much for your time today this was great getting to know you guys a little bit more get to know your story share everything with this world go online buy everyone buy all their shit right now please you will <laughs> not regret it i got some stuff upstairs he's rocking his grits tea right now it looks dope uh thank you so much for your time guys we appreciate you Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate we appreciate it. All right. We'll be in touch. Okay. Bye. Thanks again for listening. It'd be awesome if you took the time to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and let the comment below so we can connect. Again, if you want to catch a shout out as a future listener of the week, make sure you subscribe to the show on iTunes and give it a rating and review.